guys, welcome back to another tutorial from fm8tutorials.com and ADSR. If you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, you can do that at youtube.com forward slash ADSR toots. So that was a quick demo of the sound we'll be making today in FM8. I wanted to kind of go over how you can use FM8 to make some pretty thick and lush uh, pad sounds. It's definitely kind of thought more of as a bass and lead synth, but you can still get some pretty cool pads out of it. <laughs> So first thing, I'm going to make a new instance of FM8. I'm going to drag this down so we can kind of hear how it's coming along. Oh, and a quick note, um, I did have some stereo delay on it. Just very little amount, uh, just from native plugin in Logic. And also had an extra reverb on it just to thicken it up. All things that I would definitely suggest doing to your own pad sounds if you're making them in FM8. Because they do tend to, uh, even if they're made really well, they kind of have a fairly digital sound and sometimes that's not always the best thing when you're getting that sound into a mixing environment so going to make a new sound and that's what we got so far so let's jump right into it in the master section I'm gonna turn our let's turn our output to about 75, 79 around there. You don't want it all the way up, I found, with FM8 and, and pads because to, to get a pad sound, you can, you have to mess with your envelopes to get kind of get a rising and a falling evolution so the sound moves and it's not static. And if you have it all the way up towards 100, you can kind of start clipping in FM8's little way and it doesn't sound too useful for a pad. So we can do, um, for the input, Put that up to a hundred and the voices let's make that 10 for our polyphony and for our unison we're gonna do 24 and the uh, keep the dynamic selected and the detune we're gonna jack that up to about 40 to give it some thickness and the pan will do a hundred I just turned the volume down to 70, uh, and it's already kind of a neat sound in its own right. Um, for the portamento, we just leave it on auto, and the quality, this is important. For the digital, let's put that at 49. So any I was 45 to 50 would probably be fine. In the analog, I'm going to do around 30. So that buzzing sound you kind of hear? That's coming from the digital. So if you want less of that in the sound, just turn that down or off. I think it adds a nice element, so I have it at 23 for now. So it'll be a little different than the sound I played in the beginning, but you'll get the idea. Now the effects, um, I like, uh, if you've seen some of my tutorials, I like working with the effects on in FM8. It kind of helps me when I'm starting a, a sound from scratch. So with this, with the pad sound, I generally know I'm going to want reverb on it and the chorus delay, which is pretty much almost every time it helps thicken up the sound. So, And I'll also just throw on a shelving EQ just to get some extra volume, and it's a way I can con control the volume. But depending on what operators I'm using and waveforms I'm using in the operators, it's always helpful to put the shelving EQ on. So let's say a sound has too much bass or it has too much high end it's just you can go and roll it off real quick and I like putting that on from the start so I, I don't forget to do that so with, now that we got the shelving EQ on I'm going to uh, turn down the high just a little bit and now we're gonna grab the reverb and for the time I'm gonna do around 70 and for the bright I'm gonna make it a little brighter to around to around the eighties and the treble turn that up to to around ninety and the dry wet have it about eighty five to ninety and then let's take the chorus and delay 
And for the time, we're going to make it 45. The diffusion, you can keep it 0. The low cut, you can keep it 0. The high cut, keep it 100. Um, the feedback, 0. The mod rate at 50. The mod depth at 20. And then the dry wet at 65 to 70, anywhere in there. So this isn't basically, this isn't, we're kind of using more of the coarse effect. Not as much the delay because we don't have too much feedback and we're not affecting the controls that will make it have more of the delay sound. And if you're going to end up using a third party reverb plugin like I, I have on this track, here it is dry. Uh, you can turn down the reverb, but if you're just going to stick inside, stay inside of FM8, I would keep the time up a little bit for pads because it will play off of the, the decay and the, the release a little bit better. But I'm going to keep this on just for now, just so you can hear. And I would, I would use outside reverb for a pad in FM8 just because it can sound kind of digital to our ears. All right, the arpeggiator, we have to do anything. Easy Morph. Um... Turn the detune up a little. So maybe anywhere from like 15 to 20 ish. And then this is a cool this is a cool knob and section. I wish other synths had this. Just being able to control the amount of the effects you hear is really cool. Um, so I'm gonna turn that down to about 70. Because it just affected everything, which I think is really cool. Really nice tool for sound design. And then stereo width, turn that up a little. Anywhere from probably if you go too much above 20, it would get a little weird. Um, I'm going to turn my screen up and brightness a little bit. All right, so I'm going to hit play. And that sounds good for that. Now I'll click on the uh, Expert tab, so it'll take you to your operators. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to get some of these sounds dialed in for the waveform. So let's turn on, move this more front and centered. Let's turn on operators B, C, D, E, F, and X. So everything except A and Z. And then for um, operator B, let's have that going down to um, the output and around 60. And then operator C, we're going to, that's also going to go into the output around 55, 50, anywhere from 55 to 60 should be okay. Do about 58. And then D, same thing into the, just the output at about 88. And I'll explain why I'm using these numbers in a second after I get the waveforms dialed in. But I like doing a little bit of this so we, when we kind of, uh, when we get the waveforms and you're not just hearing some weird random sound, it's actually a little bit more shaped. And then for E, put that in at 100. F is 100. And X, 38. Cool. And now, you may not know about this trick, you might, but if you don't, it's useful. Down here, these boxes are for pan. So we're going to pan this down to negative 99. We're going to pan this operator up to 100. And we're going to pan this one down to negative 99. And we're going to pan this up to 100. And it only goes to negative 99, otherwise it would be 100. But So then you kind of have some good um, panning and width going on with your sound. So now that we have, I'm, I'm still going to end up uh, modulating some of the uh, operators here in the FM matrix, but now we have enough that we can kind of start sculpting the sound. So in operator B, we're going to start with the ratios here. That's going to be our low frequency, so we're going to do 0.5. 
um, the offset, you can just keep how it is, and then have the pitch envelope, make sure that's selected, and everything should be fine. And for the waveform, keep it on sign. Do you hear that low end it, it added already? So if I take this off. And I kept that center just because I don't want my bass panned out. And it's the only operator I'm using a sine wave on to get real bassy with 0.5s, a pretty low ratio, and FM8 for low sounds. So now we're going to go to operator C. And we're going to keep that on sign, but we're going to go to uh, positive 4. And that's kind of giving it that organ sound, which uh, for a pad track, for a pad sound, that's a great, that's a great um, kind of element to introduce because organs are used as like a glue track in a lot of genres, so it can add some thickness to it. And we're going to, again, keep that on sign. And offset, you can keep it 0, and you don't have to touch any of that. So for D, operator D, we're going to change the ratio to 2. And for the waveform, we're going to take sawtooth, just your basic sawtooth. And for operator E, we're going to change the ratio to 2. And we're going to keep the offset at 0. And before I forget, the offset needs to be negative 4 for this one. So you can hear that difference. I don't know if you can hear it. You really have to focus in on the D operator, but it's, it's kind of adding a little bit of detune to it. And then for operator E, make sure you select key sync here. And then for the waveform, we're going to choose the post pulse width modulation ramp mod. <laughs> And for operator F, you can keep this at just slightly detuned under 1 uh, anywhere you'd like. Keep the offset at 0, and we're going to choose the 1 plus 2 plus 3 saw. And just because, so X, the X operator um, in the FM matrix when you have that activated, that's actually your, your noise. Um, it has the envelope there, it has the cutoff and like what noise type you're adding. So while I'm here, I'm just going to dial in for, we're not using Z, as you can see it's not active. I'm just going to dial in some of the noise settings I had. It's just adding some nice high-end air to it. Moving on to... Probably the most important part of a pad sound um, in FM8, we're going to move on to the envelopes. And anytime you're doing an envelope for a pad, you're going to, to want to have a good amount of, of a, a slower attack so that, so, the so, so that it evolves. And then you can even vary it, but for this sound that I did, like you can change up each envelope to have a slightly different attack time for each operator. Um, it'll help make the sound even more kind of analog and have more of an element of movement and it's just helpful for pads and ambient sounds. But before I do that, I do, I just forgot I need to double back and we need to modulate some of this if we want to get that sound that was in the demo exactly. So already the already it's a pretty cool sound, but I'm going to modulate operator B into F at about 26 to 30, anywhere in there should do. And then uh, C into F as well at about 20. And then we're going to modulate D into itself at about 10, six, anywhere 5 to 10 should do. And then E into itself at 19 to 20-ish. And then F same thing. And now we're going to modulate F into X at about 40. I was just turned down how bright it is. Um, 
the B operators B and C kind of are going to help deal with the brightness into F because F is our one two three saw. So, but that's that's pretty good for now. So going back to the envelopes, let's go to envelope B because we're not using envelope envelope A. And I saved a uh, preset here just to make the tutor the tutorial a little quicker. But what what I got going on here is let's say it just we're not A is an active. I'll just show you quickly how to make it. So I just dragged it out, and I gave it a, an attack time. You can tempo sync it, sync it, or you don't have to. It's it's up to you, it's kind of flavor you want. But if you have kind of this arching sound like this, where the sound's going to go rise up, then fall down a little, and then fall even further for the release, it, it gives it that pad sound. But again, for uh, this specific sound, we, we're not using operator A. I was just showing you because I saved this as a preset. But this is... A, let me zoom out a little bit. This is a good example of what I have going on for operators B, um, C, D, E, and F. And you could, if you after you make it, um, you could just go to your envelopes and you could link these so they're all the same to save you the time from having to remake it. So now we have, see now it's starting to sound more like a pad with that, with the attack kind of starting out lower and rising as we go. And what you can do to get even more interesting, like I just mentioned, so let's say for B, you always want to be aware of what operator is doing what. So for actually for B, I'm going to dial this back because that's our bass. Because if we go back to our operator sign, I have it, I have it tuned low in the ratio settings. So I'm gonna actually have a, a quicker attack on that. And for operator C, if we go back to our waves, it's another sine wave. So I'm just gonna leave that how it is. And then for D, for the operators that are the more interesting waveforms, maybe like E and F, um, I'm gonna use a slightly different. So if I turn off, if I turn off E. I'll be able to hear the difference in the sound. So E's adding some brightness, so I might turn E down and actually have a different shape altogether, a little bit different shape. So you can see that now with E, I have way too long of a of a um, I dragged it out too far of the release. But so now you can hear that different operators. You can give different operators different release times, different decays, and different sustains, and it's really powerful for a pad sound. So with the external processing of the delay, the stereo delay, and the reverb I have, it sounds pretty cool already. So let's go to our noise uh, oscillator to make sure I have that right. 100 and around 16. Yeah, it looks good. Um, and you can drag this out a little. So this is actually controlling the envelope of the noise. I, uh, the way I had it on the demo sound, I didn't have the uh, noise, the decay, and the sustain going out the whole time. I just bumped it out a little. And I had the attack out just a little so you don't hear that right when you right when you hit a key. Right, that's basically it guys thanks for watching if you have any questions or comments let me know and i'll get back to them as soon as i can and if you haven't checked out fm8tutorials.com head on over there we got tons of other great tutorials on fm8 sound sets basically everything fm8 and yeah i'll see you next time thanks for watching